Hi everybody and welcome to part 5 of my first robotics programming video series. Up until this point we've created three subsystems that control the motors, solenoids, and sensors on the robot. And in this video we're going to finish our example robot program by adding commands that call all these methods on our subsystem objects by taking input from our driver and our operator controllers. We'll also look at different types of commands and how each of them can be used, as well as how to chain commands together to do some more complex tasks. But first, I want to briefly look at the robot.java class. All right, so here we are in our robot.java class, and this file should be automatically created for you when you make your project. And although there are a lot of different things you can do in this file, like making autonomous commands or running your information to a smart dashboard, um, for now I just want to explain a few quick things before we start making our own commands. So first we actually need to create instances for each of our subsystems in this class. So these will be static as well, so public static hatch delivery. We're going to make this equal to new hatch delivery, just like that. And then the same way we're going to make public static ball delivery, make that equal to new ball delivery. And then finally, our drivetrain. equals new drivetrain. And now we'll just control period to import these. And so these subsystems here are going to be useful when we're making our own commands that will work with these subsystems on the robot. Now if you're like me and your file has these underlined lines here talking about robot container, you can actually delete those for now. We're not going to worry about those too much. You can delete this one as well. So the one important line that you do need to have no matter what is this line here inside your robot periodic method. You should have this command being called here, command scheduler .get instance run. And like it says here in this description, this must be called from the robots periodic block in order for anything in the command based framework to work. So basically what that's saying is you need this line here. Otherwise any commands on your robot are not going to do anything. So make sure you have this line in your program before you continue. So with that out of the way, let's get into making some commands. So just like with our subsystems, our commands are actually all just instances of an object. So you can make your own command classes and then use them in your program. So when you create your project, you should already have a file like this here, example command.java. And this just shows you um, a basic template of what a command could look like. So you can see here we have our class example command and we're extending command base. And this is very similar to when we create a subsystem where we extend the subsystem base class and the import looks pretty similar up at the top over here. So commands all generally have the exact same methods. So we first have our constructor where we take in the subsystem that we'll be using and we call this add requirements method that will basically reserve this subsystem for your command. So this just makes sure that you're not trying to run two commands at once. So each command will have its own required subsystem and it will take up and block that subsystem while it's using it. And then it will allow that subsystem to be used by other commands later. Next, we also have these four methods here, which will always be included in any command. First is the initialize method. And you can see here it's called when the command is initially scheduled. So before your command starts running at all, this initialize method will be called to just set up any information you have. Then we have this execute method. It's called every time the scheduler runs while the command is scheduled. Basically what this means is it's going to be in a loop. And actually more precisely, it runs exactly 50 times per second. This execute command will be called. So anything that you want your command to loop over and over again, this would be the place to put it. We also have this is finished method down here. And so when this method returns true, this execute method will stop looping. And once that loop has finished, then this end method will be called here. And that will do any final code your command wants to run before disappearing forever and letting a new command run on that subsystem. So these four methods will be used every time you make a command. But luckily for us, you don't actually need to create an entire class file each time you want to make a command, and you don't always have to create all of these methods. 
So as we continue, we'll see how there's a lot of shortcuts for creating our own commands that use a lot less lines in this and is actually just a lot easier to follow and understand. So I'm actually gonna create a new file in my commands folder and I'm gonna just call it commands.java. And the reason I'm not choosing a specific command name is because I'm actually going to include all of our commands in this one file, just to keep them all in one place. And using these shortcuts that I'm gonna show you, each command really can only take as little as like three or four lines. So it doesn't make sense to split them all up into separate files. The first command we're gonna make, which is pretty much useful in any kind of robot, is an emergency stop command. And for this, we're going to say public static final command emergency stop. And the reason we're using the final here is because this command will never change. Once we make this instance of the command here, we don't want it to be able to be modified later in the program. We could have it so that this emergency stop command gets called multiple times while our robot's running, but we don't want it to ever be changed. So that's why we have this final command right here. And now this will be equal to a new instant command. And an instant command is just one of the many shortcuts that WPI's library allows us to use in order to make commands in a much simpler way than that file I showed you before. Basically what an instant command does is it takes two arguments. The first is a method, and then the second is a subsystem. Now you might be wondering, wait a second, how do you put a method as an argument into a function? And I'll show you how to do that. So first we put two brackets like this, and then a dash, and a greater than sign to create this little arrow, and then we put our function in here. And here I'm going to call robot.drivetrain.stop. And so this will call the stop method that we created earlier on our drivetrain. Now the second argument that we need here is the subsystem that this will use. And so I'll just pass in robot.drivetrain like that. Put a semicolon at the end here. And then finally, we'll go to our instant command and make sure we import that. So once we do that, we should have our new instant command that will have our robot.drivetrain.stop method, and then we pass in the subsystem that we need as well. So if you remember from the last video, all our stop method does is just calls the stop motor and will stop all motors on the drivetrain. So in just one line, we've done pretty much what was in that entire file. We've created a whole command that will stop our robot. So this instant command is a very useful shortcut. All you need to remember is that you pass this kind of function thing into the first argument, and then the second argument is the subsystem that this command will use. Great, so now we have our first method. It's a simple instant command that will just stop the drivetrain and then finish the command. Our next command that I wanna do is a launch command or a shoot command, and this one will cause the ball to shoot out of our ball delivery subsystem based on the speed from our controller joystick. So the first step for this is to actually get the value from the controller. So how do we do that exactly? For this, what our team normally does is makes a new class called io.java. So let's go make that really quick. I'm gonna put it inside this robot folder here. So I'm gonna right click, new file, and then type io.java. And we'll see I've got my class right here. And then inside it, I'm going to put two variables. The first one will be our driver controller. So we'll say public Xbox controller driver controller equals new Xbox controller. And then the port here, I'm gonna say robot map dot driver stick port. So you can see here that this value is just equal to two. And the way you can find this value is by using the FRC driver station application. And this is what you're normally using when you're driving your robot. It has a little tab where you can see your controller input. And so for each of your controllers, you can try moving a button and then see which controller is being activated. And that way you'll know which port to use on your robot. Now in the exact same way, I'm going to make another instance here, call it operator controller though, and then we're gonna connect this to operator stick port like that. And now in order to connect this IO class to the rest of our robot, we're going to go into our robot class here with all of our subsystems, and then just say public static IO, and we'll just name it IO as well, equals new IO like this. 
And so that will be our input output class. Now we can finally go back into our commands and create our launch command. So hopefully you can guess what method we want to be calling for this command. It is the power method of our ball delivery class. This one right here that sets the speed of our motors. So if we go back into our commands, instead of making this an instant command, we're actually going to do another class here called a run command. And the difference is that instant command will only call this method once, but the run command will repeatedly call that method over and over. And that's actually what we want for our launch command because we want to constantly get the speed from our controller and then pass that in to our power method here and set the speed of our motors. So that's why we're using a run command instead of an instant command because we want it to be called multiple times. So I'll say public static final command launch equals new run command. And then in here, we're gonna do the exact same thing with the parentheses, little arrow sign. And now we'll say robot.balldelivery.power. And now what do we pass into this method? Here we'll have to type robot.io to get to our IO class. And then dot operator controller dot get y. And for us, we are using the right hand for this. And so this is getting a little bit long, so I'll actually move this onto the next line here, so you can see. And then just like before, we need to include our subsystem here as well. So robot dot ball delivery like that. So there we go. Now we have our launch command, which is a run command that will repeatedly call our ball delivery power method based on the Y axis of the right joystick on the operator controller. So I know that's pretty complicated, but we were able to still make this command in one line, which is pretty awesome. So keep in mind that all of these commands are just one liners that are replacing an entire file like this where we'd have to fill in all of these methods and things like that. So these instant commands and run commands are very useful tools for our, our program. Now another command that our team thought was useful was a ball delivery reset command. And what this does is just stops the motors and lifts up the ball delivery to its upright position. So let's make that now. This will be public static final command. And we'll call this one ball delivery reset. So let's think, would we want to use an instant command for this or a run command? This one's a little bit different because we have two functions that we want to call. We want to stop the motors, but also lift up our ball delivery subsystem. And it turns out you can actually use an instant command for this as well, even though there are two methods that we want to call. The way we do that is first make it equal to new instant command, put our parentheses just like before, but Instead of just calling a method right here, we can actually put curly brackets, press enter here and make an entire method in this. So we can now call both of our functions in here. So we can say robot.balldelivery.stop. And then we can also say robot.balldelivery.raise. And so we can actually call as many methods as you want in here, but keep in mind, since this is an instant command, this block of code will only be called one time. If you wanted it to be looped repeatedly, then we would use this run command. And then finally, we need our second argument here, which is robot.ball delivery. So just the subsystem that this command will use, and then finish off with our semicolon to create our ball delivery reset command. Next up for our ball delivery, we would like to have a button that can toggle the piston. So just bring it up and back down whenever we want to. So this one sounds like another instant command because it's just something we want to run once not something that's looping over and over. So we'll call this one public static final command. We'll call this one toggle ball delivery pistons. And this will equal a new instant command. And so this time we're going to, just like always have our parentheses and our little arrow, we're going to call robot.balldelivery.toggle pistons like that. And then we need our comma and specify the subsystem that we want to be using, which is robot.balldelivery. And we'll put the semicolon there to finish it off. 
And so there you have it, another command that will just toggle the pistons on our ball delivery system. So with that, our ball delivery commands are actually complete. We have a launch method where we can use the controller to specify any kind of power level we want to. We have a reset command that will reset the ball delivery to its original position. And we have this toggle ball delivery pistons that can raise and lower the subsystem whenever we want to. In the next video, we're gonna finish off our commands.java file and add in the commands for the hatch delivery. And then I'll show you how to connect these commands to our controller input and finish up our robot program. So I'll see you in the next video.